Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. All right, part 16, elastic net regression. This is another type of penalized regression models, and which is a combination of uh, lasso regression and ridge regression. Now let's dive into the details. Okay, so if you haven't watched part 13, 14, and 15, where I covered regularization motivation, ridge regression, and penalized regression, please make sure that you watch those videos and then come back to this slide, okay? Uh, so, as I've repeated multiple times by now, the idea of regularization, the, the motivation is something like this. Let's say you have an overfitted model, which is complex, the bias is small, variance is large. You want to make sure that you go from an overfitted model to a good balance of model, right? A good balance of bias versus variance, right? And the idea is that by, by making the model less complex, let's say we start from here, and the model is complexer, by making the model less complex, you're getting a little bit of bias, you're adding a little bit of bias intentionally, but you reduce the variance a lot, right? So this is a little bit of bias that you add intentionally, this is a lot of reduction in variance that you get, then go from this model to this model. So, and overall, you're gonna get a better performance uh, of, the, of your model, okay? So that's the motivation. Now, what is elastic net? As I said earlier, it's a combination of the rich regression and lasso regression. And here is the loss function. Uh, it's a summation of MSC plus a penalty term. And that penalty is a linear function, is a linear combination between this one. What is this? We are using L1 norm. So this is lasso. This one, you're using L2 norm. This is our rich. And we're going to give, give the weights based on the two hyperparameters, lambda 1, lambda 2, okay? All right, so in Lasso, some weights are reduced to zero, right? But other may be quite large. In Ridge, weights are small in magnitude, but they're not reduced to zero, right? So this is the summary of Lasso and, and Ridge, right? In Lasso, we send the weights we set some of them, some of them exactly equal to zero, right, for some of them. And for the other ones that are remaining in the model, they may be large. So this is less. So for ridge, you know, we send, to, we reduce the features, you know, we shrink the features, the coefficient of the features, maybe send them towards zero. So they are not, not all of them are large, but at the same time, not many of them are zero, right? Now let's say, can we combine these two ideas? Can we get the best of these, best of two worlds? And the answer is yes, we can do elastic net, right? So elastic net, we may be able to get the best of the two worlds, right? By making some weights zero, so basically it's forced the sum of those Ws to be exactly equal to zero, while reducing the magnitude of the others as well. So this is what we can do with, with ridge regression. So a combination of the two. Okay, now let's compare rich versus lasso versus elastic net. So this slide is going to be a very important one and hopefully is going to answer the question that many of you guys have that when can I use ridge? Why should we always not use elastic net if it is the best of the two, right? Why do we want to use lasso? So in order to answer all those questions, let's review this slide very carefully. All right, now let's review some questions. And based on the answers to those questions, we will end up using either reach, lasso, or elastic net. So what I want you to do is that pause the video uh, and try to answer all these questions on your own. Okay, so now let's do it together. First one, this model can shrink the coefficients uh, towards zero. It can shrink it towards zero. So reach, yes, lasso, Yes, and elastic net, yes, right? So that's the answer. Okay, next one. This model can include all the features in the model, even with large lambda. So if lambda is large, we know that the, pen the, the penalty term is going to be, if the penalty term is large, then the algorithm is going to get rid of those features that are less useful, right? So here the question is that, 
this model can include all the features in the model even with large lambda so in other in another term it's not going to send them to set them exactly equal to zero so yes no and no do you agree there you go okay now the next question this is a really important one this model can force some of the coefficient estimate to be exactly equal to zero and for that reason it can be used for feature selection right so this is this is a really interesting property of the model right or, or sparse output or more explainable so what do we mean by that by sparse output we mean that the model is less complex right it's simpler and so if it is simpler it is going to be more explainable as well so what do you think can we do it with reach no how about less so yes how about elastic net yes all right next one is it robust and by robust we mean is it uh, resistant to outliers or not right We're go i'm going to discuss this uh, let's say this one and this one together what do we mean by robust and if there is any analytical solution or requires gradient descent or not so 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 let's let's focus on these two questions together for the robust part is it sensitive to outliers remember in reach we are using l2 an L2 norm in general is sensitive to outliers, right? When you're adding uh, the squared version of the coefficients together. So it is going to be sensitive, right? So is it robust? No. For lasso, we're using L1 norm. So it is less sensitive to outliers. And for elastic net, it's somewhere in between. So we can call not very, right? All right. And now, is there any analytical solution? And for that, if there is any analytical solution, then we don't need to do gradient descent because there's a closed form solution. If there is no closed form solution, we have to use gradient descent to, to optimize the parameters in the model, right? So, and the question is, uh, no analytical, analytical solution. So for ridge regression, remember, the loss function was very well behaved, right? In ridge regression, we were minimizing the MSE plus L2. So this is a well behaved one. So there is an anal analytical solution. We don't need to have it. We don't need to use gradient descent for finding the optimal values for parameters. But what about lasso and elastic net? Well, unfortunately, we need to use gradient descent because the, fun the, the loss function is not well behaved. Okay, so this is maybe one of the advantages of reach over uh, lasso and elastic net. Basically, the idea is that the path um, to the optimal coefficient to the optimal weight is smoother in reach versus lasso and elastic net. And then finally, let's talk about if there is always a unique solution or not. So for that, what do we mean? Let me let me show you an example. So remember, in lasso, in reach, we are using L2 norm. And L2, there's a unique solution. If I go want to go from A to B, there's a unique solution for that. Okay. And for that reason, in reach regression, there's a unique solution. However, for lasso, we can have solution number one. This is L1, solution number two solution number three this is our Manhattan distance right I can go some like this from A to B like this so this is another solution right let's say solution number four so for that reason there is no unique solution for lasso and you 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 might want to think that okay elastic net is a combination of ridge and lasso so why there is a unique solution for elastic net well the discussion is beyond the, uh, the scope of this conceptual machine learning course that I'm covering, but there's a paper written in the, around 2005, I believe, that it mathematically proved that there is a unique solution for elastic net optimization problem. All right, I think, I hope that with this the comparison, now you have a better understanding that why you should use ridge regression, for example, over lasso or an elastic, and why do you want to, you want to use elastic net over ridge or lasso? Okay, now finally, let's look at the behind the scene of elastic net as well. So in the previous videos, we covered that this is our rich optimization, you know, convex optimization problem. This is the lasso convex optimization problem. And finally, this is our elastic net. And as you can see, in lasso and elastic net, the model is able to set the features, the coefficient of the feature exactly equal to be zero. So we use them, we use lasso and elastic net for uh, feature selection. So here in this example, imagine we are using, uh, showing the parameters with theta. So what do we have here? 
theta 1 is equal to 0, theta 2 is a positive number. Here, same story. Theta 1 is equal to 0, theta 2 is a positive number. But here, theta 1, sorry, not w, theta 1 and 0, theta 1 and theta 2 may go towards 0, but they're never exactly equal to 0. All right, so L1 norm, L2 norm, and a combination of the two. I hope that this visualization helps you to realize that why the elastic net and lasso are able are used for feature selection uh, and why the rigid regression cannot, you know, con construct by construction cannot be used for feature selection. All right, I hope you enjoyed this four uh, parts for the uh, penalized regression. So in the first one, in episode 13, I covered the regularization idea and uh, what's the motivation. In part 14, we covered rich regression and in part, the yeah, in part, I think, yeah, 15, we covered the lasso and in this one, we're covering the elastic net. All right, take care and until the next one, um, have a good one.